So how does ETCS authorize a train to move? Well, it does it by transmitting a distance that the train is allowed to travel. ETCS is all based on distances. Both the position of the train and the extent of the authority are based on a distance. The train is authorized to travel a distance and once authorized, it's up to the track side to maintain the locking. The safe communication system in ETCS is designed around transmitting the authority to the train. Without an authority, the train will not be able to move. Knowing whether the authority has been received and whether it is still applicable and being applied by the train is more of a challenge particularly when the track side wishes to change the movement authority or release blocking. You have to combine the information you receive with the train from the train with information received from track side train detection. Now level one is not so complicated. Authorities are only received from Belize groups and the authority refers to that Belize group as the reference. If the train does not receive the authority, then it'll either remain in a degraded mode, such as staff responsible, or if it had previously had a movement authority, the result could be a trip with the emergency of brake being applied. And once the authority has been granted to the train from a Belize group, it is stored by the onboard and it remains valid. In a later talk, we'll consider how those authorities can time out if the train doesn't move for a significant period of time. Moving to levels two, three, and the future level R, the authority can be transmitted at any time, but the authority is still referenced back to a Belize group. And when the authority is sent, an acknowledgement of the message can be requested, but that acknowledgement merely says that the message has been received and was correctly uh, read. It doesn't say that it has been applied. It doesn't tell you that the train has now got an MA stored on board, a movement authority that is. And similarly, if you send a replacement authority to the train, it may be actioned, or there again, it may not. So making a safety decision based on just having sent information to the train over the radio is not necessarily a good answer. One of the advantages of level two, three and R is that as circumstances change, you can transmit a new movement authority that can replace the existing one or it could cancel an existing, the one that is being applied. The radio transmission allows this to occur at any time. But we come back to the question of how do we know that the tracks are, from the trackside viewpoint that the request has been actioned. Sometimes we can make an assumption based on the message being acknowledged. But that is all it is and only an assumption. For some commands sent to the train, there is a response back which actually confirms it has been applied. So sometimes we need to choose whether to use one method or another, depending on whether we need that confirmatory response. The track side will tell the train to expect radio messages on a regular basis. This is as part of what are called the national values. These are transmitted to the train, normally from a Belize group, and it configures the behavior of the train to match the infrastructure. And if no message is received in a, for a period of time, then the train will react. And how it reacts is also one of those national values. It might be no reaction, or it could be to apply the service brake, or it could be to apply the emergency brake. One of the problems here is that we send these national values to the train, possibly from a Belize group, possibly over the Euro radio. But how do we know the train has actually got the right parameters stored on board and it is applying them? When we send a replacement authority, a new distance to travel, perhaps based on a new reference location, we can 
decide whether to ask for the confirmation that it is received, but we will not know whether it has actually been actioned by the onboard, particularly if the replacement authority was to make the movement shorter. If we're just extending an existing authority, the next section of the line is now clear, then if that message is not received and processed correctly, the train will continue to work to its existing authority, which will be safe, and will just have a performance impact. If, however, we wanted to shorten the authority, then we really do need to know that the train has received the information and will be applying it, even if that does mean that the train will have to apply the brakes on behalf of the driver. And one of the other advantages of ETCS levels 2, 3 and R is that in event of emergency, we can send a message immediately to the train telling it to stop. These emergency messages are really important. And because they're important, they are encoded in a way where the onboard will respond to the track side, confirming that it has received the message and whether it has actioned it or not. So from a track side point of view, we need to understand the level of assurance that the response back from the onboard gives us, particularly if we're deciding to release the locking of a route. Are the messages really positive responses? Are acknowledgements just indicative? And how can we make assumptions about the behaviour of the onboard based on all of the information that we think we have sent to it and knowing how the subsets work?